Well, it is time to say goodbye to my pepper crop. It's the time of year now where nothing more is really going to ripen. We've got some nice peppers here. Uh, California wonder, sweet peppers. Um, yeah, so nothing's really going to ripen or progress now, so it's best to take them off. Another one, a few more through there. Take them all off the plants. Um, even though we've got some little small ones, we just haven't got the weather now. So this will all be thrown into the compost. These will all go inside and be frozen or cooked or used. I do find that if you, even if you just store peppers in a nice uh, dry, cool area in like a muslin bag or something, they last forever. Um, so I'm going to clear this entire section of peppers and aubergines. Um, so that'll be this gone for the season. They've worked really, really well in this space. Um, so next year again, I'm going to put them back into this sunny spot. Um, but pot them into bigger pots to try and get a bigger harvest. But yes, I'm really happy with the peppers. And they're actually, for homegrown peppers, they are a very, very decent size. If you look at my hand, I can't hold it up. If you, how can I hold this up? Oh, here we go. So there's my hand, there's the peppers. Not a bad size at all. So there we go, that's the last of this year's harvest. Once upon a time, I never thought I would be able to grow my own peppers that were the same size as the ones you'd get in a supermarket. I mean, they're just amazing. So that's one thing, um, so that's these peppers. One thing I did want to say as well that I forgot was these. So all the leaves are gonna go on the compost heap. The root balls I put in with my chickens. Um, and I do that with root balls for almost any plant that I know is not toxic and won't I hurt them and I put it into the dust bath because what happens is the soil will dry out and the the hens then just scratch it to oblivion if you put a root ball like that straight into the compost heap unless your compost heap is mega hot it doesn't break down that easily put it in with your chickens put it in with the uh, the dust bath or wherever you want to contain it um, and they will scratch it right down to nothingness um, so this will be going into the dust bath to dry out and be bathed in these are going to the compost and then this lovely bounty is coming indoors. Well, these are the four uh, flower seed trays that I sowed um, last week, I think it was. And you can see there are a few little pieces of green coming up. Now, this is actually green spillage, I think. So I think these are actually little larkspur um, that came from this side. Um, not larkspur, forget, uh, snapdragons. Um, but... You can see here this is a little hollyhock and then there is another little hollyhock here. And so it's nice that even in November, I keep getting ahead of myself, even in October, we have new plants coming. Now obviously at this time of year, um, you're going to have uh, reduced growth. And we often think, oh, it's because it's colder. But actually, remember, the main thing is it's the um, reduced light hours, which is going to prevent your um, plants growing so much. Obviously, cold comes into it as well, but the reduced amount of light um, through the day will also have an effect. But I'm just really, really happy that some of these are coming up. Now, obviously, these are also in the conservatory, so they're going to get some additional uh, heat and some additional um, sort of artificial light um, so they will keep growing but over the next few weeks these trays should all pop into life and then they'll sit here quite happily not doing a lot till next year in the warmer weather and then we'll have loads of early spring um, seedlings to go into the flower garden well it looks like i'm going to be eating a lot of chard this uh winter because here are my chard seedlings and i just wanted a few chard uh, just at the end of my spinach bed. But here is my chart. Um, and here is my spinach. Where? I hear you say. Where? I ask myself. Um, I don't know what's happened. We've got a few random little ones come up. There's one. There's one. And then there's a nice little clump here. So I will prick out this clump. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, we've got five plants here, so I'll prick those out and line them out a bit. And then there's a few sporadic ones here and there, but I don't really understand why they are. Um, so we will probably move some of this chard 
over to here. Uh, obviously, as I say, prick these out and thin them out and put them into lines. I may even, I know we're in October now, I may even go out and get a few more seeds. I think that seed packet must have been completely dud. I may run out and get a few more seeds, shove them in and just see what happens. But it's a little bit late now to be sowing outside um, although they can survive the cold once they've kind of got a few established leaves on them and if they're closhed um, it depends on the winter and it is getting a bit cold now for the germinating seeds but yeah uh, spinach not so great chard absolutely tons of the stuff well today i am putting a few more cabbages out so these are some nice little cabbage seedlings and why am I putting more out because look we had a little bit of a chicken escape she was very good actually she just nibbled the big leaves and so they most of them have survived however she did um, she didn't actually eat them over here but she dug them up so this bed uh, we've got one two three, four left, and two were dug up. So I'm just gonna pop a couple of these out. I've also got a couple of spaces over here with the um, red veined sorrel leaves. So I'm gonna pop a couple in there as well, just to fill up these spaces and make sure these can be out over winter. Um, they're lovely little plants. Obviously, as I've said before, especially with brassicas and things, you can plant them deeper. So I'm gonna be planting them right up to here. Um, so they're nice and close knit to the ground. And then, these will happily sit through the winter with all that snow and frost that we expect uh, and then they'll be ready for us to eat um, late spring early summer now this time last year i dabbled a little bit in microgreens and as the uh, weather is getting colder and the days are getting shorter i thought let's do it again let's get these microgreens going so i've got my first tester pots on the go i'm only doing this for myself i just i basically i will just want to run it for a couple of months for personal use um just getting used to all the intricacies of growing microgreens properly before i start to try and build up the quantities so i'm just just going to start with two trays because otherwise i'm going to be overwhelmed by the amount of greens to eat um, so i have some basil so these are both basil these are a red leaf basil uh, we have a lovely little pak choy seed here uh, we have some radish now the radishes did brilliantly last year they really really did and then sunflowers i have uh, sowed them quite thinly because i don't want to overdo it and the sunflowers in particular got quite a lot of mold now one tip i did get is you spray so this is a one percent hydrogen peroxide so you spray that to kill any mold spores that might be there initially you might think oh my goodness you're putting hydrogen peroxide onto seeds but it kills off the mold and you have to think you're not actually going to eat these seed shells you're going to eat the small sprouts that come out of them uh, then what you want to do is you actually this i mean this also seems a bit strange but you won't actually want to stack them because you want to create some weight you want to stimulate um not stimulate simulate as if they're in the soil so you want to stack them i'll put this is quite a heavy candle candle on top and then i will then check them in two or three days when they've started to sprout and then they'll go under the grow lights So I need to put a big shout out to Buddy Mojo, uh, who also known as Mandy, for sourcing me this treadle feeder and another one actually, and a drinker. Um, so she discovered there's a big sell-off of poultry stuff on, on Facebook, and the, this was five pounds. Um, a lovely galvanized treadle feeder. Um, so thank you very much for sourcing those for me. Totally awesome. I've got a couple of these and a drinker, um, and it's really, really good because I need a lot more food down with my laying flock um, so that they can come and I can just fill them up it makes life a lot easier than having to come in every day and uh, do food and do waters if you can just come and check your birds and pick up your eggs rather than have to worry about maintenance every day it makes keeping birds a lot more uh, enjoyable so if you don't know what a treadle feeder is here's our little treadle they come up doop, 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 doop. they stand on it and that opens and then the food comes down there and then this holds about half to two thirds of a, a 20 kilogram uh, sack of grain. Um, so this should be really, really useful in the future. As I say, I've got another one as well. Um, I may use that in my um, grower's shed, 
because uh, I'm always having to go in there and fill their food up. Um, but yeah, that's really, really great to have some actual new equipment, giving it a good wash down, a good disinfect. Um, and the nice thing is because it's stainless steel, we're not using more plastic. So really, really great. And thank you, Buddy Mojo. Something else I'm doing this week uh, with the weather becoming colder and winter on the way is propagating this lovely Christmas cactus. Now, obviously, it's this time of year that this is going to be thinking about um, flowering. Um, but you can take cuttings from it all year round. Now, I've never done this. That's a smaller. I did it as a kid. Um, I can't really remember how I did it. Um, so I haven't done it as an adult. Now I do want to get a few different plants and I'd love to actually make some crosses because I follow a couple of people on Instagram and they have some amazing hybrids they've made for themselves. But for now, I'm just going to propagate this um, and basically clone it. So basically what you want to do is you, you can do it singly leaved, you can just twist a single leaf off. But if I remember rightly, it's better to do it with a Y shape. So you find your bud. So here is our Y and here is our leaf node at the bottom. You don't uh, uh, pull it or um, rip it off you, like you sometimes do with succulents. You actually just twist it and eventually that will come away. There we go. And now we have a little, oh, we've got more of a Y. We've got actually three there. Um, so you've got your little uh, propagation, your cutting. Now you don't want to shove that straight into the soil. I've got a nice little mix of compost and perlite here but like with succulents, you want to let this heal. You want to let this end heal over. So leave it out for a couple of days just to cause a little heal on there and so it won't rot. And then dunk it in the soil. Keep it moist, much more moist than you would um, your normal succulents. Um, and then this will turn in to many more plants. So let's uh, take a few more. And then I'll show you in a few months time, hopefully, all these lovely little baby Christmas cacti.